Hey, ¿qué pasa, Calexico? Welcome back to the podcast. Uh, like always, before we begin, uh, I want to thank my sponsors. I uh, want to thank my friends Camilo, Sergio, and Jake for sponsoring the podcast. Thank you guys for becoming um, sponsors of the podcast. I also want to thank Dylan Castillo from Castillo Bookkeeping Services. If you're in need of any bookkeeping services, you may contact them at 760-960-7601 or via email at acas1025 at yahoo.com. Finally, I want to thank David Gastel. If you're thinking of buying a home in, or property in the Imperial or San Diego counties, make sure to contact David at 760-235-9576. He's not only a realtor, but an investor with over 20 years of experience, and he'll teach you along the way in one of the most important investments of your life. Um, also want to remind everybody that, um, you know, I know that the Valley is a little, you know, out of that, I think it's phase one, we're moving to phase two. Businesses are opening, um, which is good. Uh, but also want to remind everybody to be safe. You know, we want to stay healthy so that our businesses stay open and people stay out of the hospital. So make sure you do your best to wash your hands, wear your face mask, keep your distance and just be safe because it's, you know, it, it helps everybody out. Not only uh, our medical people in the hospitals, but our local businesses that are struggling to, you know, stay alive and, and, and just stay open. But, but yeah, um, It's really important that we do that because, like I said, it, it, it helps everybody in, in general. Um, it relieves a lot of stress that we're all going through. Um, my guest today is Henry Liera, who is part of uh, this group called Valle Bota. Um, Henry, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so my name is Henry. I am a junior at Stanford University, and I graduated from Southwest High School in 2018. So I'm an Imperial Valley resident, um, born and raised, lived here my whole life. I love to call this home, and I, I love to get involved in any kind of way I can. So um, can you tell us a little bit about um, what Valle Bota is and how it you know became a part? I know that you're kind of like one of the founding uh, or one of the, you know, the ones that started this whole this whole little group. Yeah, so Valle Bota is a nonpartisan, youth-driven organization. So um, it's made up of about uh, 40, 40 to 50 high school and college students, both from IBC and as well as those who have gone away to university. You know, we're representing state schools, UC schools, private schools, Ivy League schools. Um, so we're a pretty diverse uh, group as far as representation goes. And... Uh, you know, our, our goal and our mission is to kind of improve voter turnout rate here in the Imperial Valley. So in the 2018 midterm elections, uh, California had around a 50 percent voter turnout rate with every single county reaching 50 percent, except Imperial Valley, mm -hmm. which to put it in, in layman terms, that means we were last place. We were the worst voter turnout rate in the 2018 midterm elections. And, you know, we, we saw this as a big issue in our community that, uh, you know, if we look around us, there, there's been a lot of, you know, there's uh, local officials committing crimes, either using their position to commit crimes or kind of doing it on their free time. And, you know, we, we've kind of seen politicians kind of uh, use Uh, seats as resume boosters or as um, more as a grab of power and as youth in the valley who who grew up here and this is our home and we love it and these are our roots to be frank we're tired of it and we wanted to do something to do a change and we we know that the only way to see change in any community is in the voting booth so we decided to put this organization together And partly what we're doing is, one, trying to improve voter registration turnout. So we're having canvassing events, putting out flyers. And then another part of our project is to inform the public of, as to what's going on. We know it could all be so overwhelming. I mean, if you drive anywhere in El Centro or anywhere in Calexico or anywhere in Brawley, you're going to see 10, 15 posters of saying, vote for me, vote for me, vote for me. And it, it could be so overbearing. And especially during this time where there are so many bigger issues, no one could really focus on researching politicians or trying to figure out who to vote for. So our, our group is trying to take out all of that confusing aspects away and give accessible, easy to read, easy to digest information, um, both through our social media platforms, as well as using our email newsletters um, that we've slowly started to see more and more people sign up for. Cool, cool. Um, I, I think that we've, we've seen a trend here in the Valley where, you know, a lot of young people are, trying to get involved 
um and and you know it's it's really it's really um interesting because um um because I, I feel like a lot of people that, you know, go to college, you know, they, they graduate and they, they stay away um, and they just, you know, make make their lives wherever they, you know, they end up staying. Why is it important for you and, you know, the other members of the group to like really make a change here in the Valley? Yeah. So I think there's always a misconception about, you know, you go off to college and this idea that you become a far left radical and, you you know, you're this liberal and all of this kind of like nasty words get thrown at you when you go off to college. But the reality is we get to go off to college and we get to learn. We get to have a different world perspective. We we get to understand these issues that we didn't understand. When, to be fair, we didn't understand it when we were younger. And now that we've gone away to college, we've gone into this experience, we, we've heard of how other counties function. You know, I, I've talked to other people and no, it's not normal for their city councils to, to do bribes and take bribes and commit other crimes. And, you know, we, we get this experience and I think it would be a complete injustice if we stayed away from our community and stayed away from this knowledge. I think part of my personal experience of the only reason I ever wanted to go to college was to make an, a difference in the world, as naive as that could be. And I, it's something that I continue to want to do. And I, I think the most important thing that I, I've been able to kind of pick up on tools and experience and organization skills and now apply that to the Valley because especially now the COVID-19 hit our, our valley hard and that that is what it is and we're about to enter a hopefully not dark period but you know there's is going to be a struggle and there is going to be time that we will need rebuilding and we need need great leadership leading the way and I think that's that's a huge reason why we kind of want to get back to our community in any way we can because we don't know where life is going to take us we don't know if in the future we're going to no longer want to come back to the valley or our life's going to settle us elsewhere but right now our family's here our parents are here we're here because of this pandemic and we're we we want to give back to our community yeah um you know, like we were talking earlier and, you know, we're, just, we're talking about how a lot of people here in, in the Valley or, or in California, they always think that, that you know, um, you know, our state is a, you know, Demo uh, you know, if, uh, our party is Democratic, you know, mainly. So like most of our, our electoral votes are going to go to Democratic candidate. So a lot of people feel like, oh, you know, it doesn't matter if I vote or not, especially here in the Valley. Um, why is it important for people like in smaller communities to you know, make sure that they cast their vote. Yeah. So, you know, this kind of conception that your vote doesn't matter has been ingrained in us for so long. I remember being in like first grade and this conversation was already coming up. And, you know, in some aspects, that's true where you're, you're, you are a kind of smaller voice and the way our, our kind of voting system works at the, at the federal level, your vote may not matter, especially in California where we're dominantly democratic. However, where your voice does matter are these kind of um, these local issues, these who is going to be on your city council, who is going to be on your school board, who's going to be leading IID. You know, these decisions that they make actually impact you and your voice does matter when it comes to choosing these people. And I think we've done a completely injustice by not showing up to the voting polls and kind of being complacent with who our leaders are. And don't get me wrong, we have amazing leaders who are doing the best that they can and are out there giving 110 percent I, I it, that is the reality however you know there are some who have just been kind of complacent over the last few years and you know there, there's nothing wrong with that but we as youth kind of want to see a change and we are willing to put in the work to kind of see that and voting is so is so important your vote does matter especially in these local elections in fact it matters even more because these decisions are going to be the ones that actually impact you versus the federal po policy or national policy or even state policy can be a little distant but these local politicians are impacting your daily lives and it's so important to vote yeah and not only um you know the people that are being elected but you know propositions or you know all these things that that you know we're also voting when it comes to you know election season we we I mean, yeah we vote for presidents we vote for uh congressmen like all these people but but we like you said like locally city council school boards and propositions are 
the things that affect us the most. And I, I, I think we, we, we kind of miss that, you know, it, 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 it doesn't set in our, in our minds that, you know, that's something that we really need to focus. And something that I've, I've been seeing on your Instagram is, you know, you guys are posting information about, you know, propositions that are, can you tell us a little bit about what people can find on your social media? Yeah. So on our social medias, um, currently we're doing our proposition series. So we're posting, I believe, two to three a week um, and just informing everybody, you know, what is this proposition? You know, who would it affect? Who won't it affect? And if you vote yes on it, what does that mean? And if you vote no on it, what does that mean? And so that's kind of what's going on in our social media right now. And then in the um, next few weeks, we've already reached out to all of the candidates and sent out a questionnaire for them to fill out. And so these candidates will have an opportunity to present who they are and what they plan on doing. However, it, it should be important to note that even if they don't fill out those questionnaires, we will be doing independent research on every single candidate. And that's going to be about 91 <laughs> and releasing those out to the public so that people could be able to go, oh, well, who's running for Central City Council and go to this post and look at everybody running and read a little bit about them. And then, you know, if they want to read more, if they filled out that questionnaire, they'd be able to like DM us on Instagram, DM us on Twitter, DM us on Facebook and say like, hey, I want to know more about Blink. And we'd say like, oh, here's your questionnaire. So we have that going on. And then as well as what you could find on our on our social medias um, are, is information as far as how to register to vote, when to register to vote, important deadlines that are coming up, because that is very, very confusing. I, I, let me, I you know, I consider myself uh, a, a little on the um, easy to grasp information and being able to pick up um, information very easily. And I, the amount of times I had to call the county to clarify dates and times, it, it, it's it, it's not that so much it's ridiculous because this is throughout the state of California, but it can be daunting for kind of someone who's just not that interested in politics, but is just kind of there and a member of our community. And so we kind of want to help get rid of all of that kind of troubling misinformation out of the way. And so that's partly uh, that's also another way that we're using our social media platform to clear out um, any misinformation or kind of um, wrong ideas of how things work. Okay. Um, I know you guys have been canvassing, you know, uh, cities in the Valley, um, you know, trying to get people to vote and stuff like that. H how hard has it been with, you know, the pandemic going on? Yeah. So, uh, you know, at first we were a little skeptical about canvassing, but, uh, you know, the reality is there's only one neighborhood in the entire Imperial Valley that has high speed internet. And not everybody's connected to the Internet. Not everybody has Facebook. Not everybody has Twitter. Not everybody has Instagram. So, you know, if we really wanted to make a meaningful impact in our community, this was something that we needed to do. So as we kind of waited for things to die down here and as things are starting to look up here in our community in regards to the pandemic, you know, we are canvassing um, communities and specifically targeting low voter turnout rate spots so you know we are a, a young group a fairly new group and resources are scarce so you know we're trying to optimize what we can do so we're targeting these low turnout rate spots and you know we're following all of our social distancing guidelines you know we're all wearing masks everybody who has agreed to go you know is um okay with what they're doing and we're kind of just going to neighborhoods um knocking on the doors and leaving a flyer and just kind of walking away and on this flyer has information regarding you know how to register to vote, when to register to vote by, as well as some information regarding our social media and kind of what we do as an organization. Um, what are some important dates that are coming up that you get, that you remember right now that you can say that, you know, people should look out for? Yeah. So, for example, uh, October 19th is kind of the deadline to register to vote. However, uh, after speaking to our county, uh, there is a kind of an almost extended deadline to October 27th. Um, as far as being able to, you know, register to vote and still getting your ballot delivered in the mail. So, you know, we're trying to get everybody to register to vote by October 19th. But, you know, when October 19th comes, you know, we're going to say, hey, don't worry if you didn't. There's still an opportunity for you to do so. Um, and then on October 5th, for example, uh, you know, there was a recent executive order passed by Governor Newsom that um, they're sending everyone's ballot, regardless if they're an absentee voter, 
in the mail. So on October 5th is when that's happening. And so, you know, there's opportunities to track your ballots. And so we're trying to give that information um, so that everybody would be able to kind of stay up to date where their ballot is when it gets mailed out on October 5th. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, going back to the, you know, mail, mailing vote, I mean, I think it's even easier for everybody to everybody that's registered, you know, to vote even now it's easier because a lot of times people say like, oh, it's hard for me to go out to vote because I'm either working, I'm, you know, busy. But now that everybody's getting their, you know, their valid through the mail, it's like, it's a no brainer. Like, I'm hoping that this time around we get, you know, a little bit more turnout than, than we've done in the past. But, um, what are, do you, you know, have, you guys have looked at numbers, right? Like you guys have gotten uh, data and information on, 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 on the, you know, border turnout here in the Valley. What's the, the city that has the lowest turnout, you know, an average? Calexico. Oh, really? Calexico. Calexico has the lowest voter turnout in the entire county. And to be honest, that's not saying, you know, Calexico is far behind everybody else. Like as a whole, the Imperial Valley averagely tends to have a low voter registration. But out of everybody, Calexico is our problem spots. So primarily, you know, we first kind of tested the waters with El Centro as far as our canvassing and that goes. But now we're kind of shifting our gears to focus on more of these neighborhoods that aren't kind of registering to vote or even going out to vote. Um, but, you know, Calexico is a problem spot here in the county. Oh, well, that's crazy. I didn't. I, I mean, I kind of like figured because we have a lot of um, uh, a lot of senior homes, senior uh, complexes, and then a lot of our uh, population, you know, is uh, comes, you know, comes and goes from Calexico to Mexicali. Like they, they go back and mm-hmm. forth. So, like, I mean, they they really don't. Um, I don't know. Get involved. Like, gr- I grew up in in, in low income homes, and we have we have a lot of mm-hmm. um, low income apartments. And and yeah, like I grew up like not really. I don't remember my parents going out to vote. I don't remember my neighbors' parents going out to vote. Um, and and yeah, like you, uh, when you live in, in in, I mean, at least my experience when I lived in in these low income projects, um, you kind of like felt like not part of, uh, city politics, or valley politics. So like you you didn't really like, uh, feel like going out to vote was something really important. And and it's crazy because where I used to live, it was like ninety two apartments. So that's a big you know big chunk of people that are not turning out to vote. So so yeah, I feel like um. I mean, I don't know for sure, but I feel that like these these uh, apartments are where uh, you have the lowest turnout vote in, in Calexico. But but yeah, it's crazy. I, like I said, I, I kind of feel like felt that we were gonna be like on the lowest, but um, I wasn't sure. But let me see. How, uh... Yeah, and I think speaking on that, you know, it, it it's more than just people choosing not to vote. You know, there are a lot of contributing factors as to why people don't vote. And you kind of touched upon them where, you know, you kind of feel isolated from this community and you kind of feel like your vote doesn't matter. And to be frank, like there, there is somewhat of uh, almost a political establishment here in the county. Um, you know, there there's kind of like a group of people who tend to always vote. And I think that's what we kind of get in this routine of feeling isolated from this kind of local politics. But, you know, and I think that's part of partly what we're trying to do as an organization is tear down that stigma that, you know, in the, it isn't a, a, a boys club or it isn't uh, just something that only a select people could do or it's something just for them. No, voting is a universal right. This is something that their people have fought for. You know, people have advocated for people have advocated for, you know, having a Spanish ballot. You know, that's something that for so long people couldn't do. And in in many ways, you know, that that put so many barriers on a community like Calexico, where there are so many um, Spanish speaking households where they only speak Spanish. And so, you know, there's a lot of work that has been done to get so many people to be able to vote. And we want to help people realize that their voice does matter and that, you know, whatever they decide or no matter who they vote for, you know, we're nonpartisan. It doesn't matter if it's the left or right. Just go vote. Go get your voice heard. Go have a decision as far as who you want on your board. And, you know, and if it doesn't if it doesn't go in your favor, it is what it is. There's going to be another election in two years and you get to vote again, you know. And so we want to get people here in the habit of continuing to vote. And that's kind of a really a long term goal of ours. Yeah. And it's and it's really uh, interesting that, you know, 
I feel that like if more people go out to vote, being that we have such a low turnout, I feel that if you get more people to vote, you'll see a more diverse uh, set of individuals, you know, in, 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 in these positions in city council, school boards, because like I said earlier, like it, it's, you know, it, it's such a small margin of, you know, votes where people win or lose in these elections here locally, that if you get more people to vote, it's going to be like, I feel that a lot more, you know, people representing different communities will be able to, you know, have a, a seat on the table, uh, whether a city council, school board or, or, or county board. And yeah, it's great. Like, yeah, it's, it's so crazy that, you know, you know, not a lot of people go out to, especially, like I said, I'm hoping that with these mail-in ballots, you know, people are going to do it even more. Um, you know, you being somebody that's fairly, uh, you know, you're super young because I'm, I'm almost 40 and you, I'm sure like you're in your early 20s. Um, and I, like I said earlier, like there's a lot of people, young people here in the Valley that are, that are trying to get involved, make a change. Do you feel that that's going to get more grandparents or uncles because of these younger generations bugging them to go out of vote? Do you think that it's going to make a difference in, in terms of numbers? I hope so. You know, however, it, it it's going to take more than just kind of the youth getting involved. It, you know, it takes it takes, you know, people your age, people in your position. It takes the adults kind of looking to the youth and acknowledging their kind of work that they're doing and, you know, seeing it as them trying to get involved in a community and making an impact. You know, I, my kind of first experience with kind of local politics, you could say here in the Valley, you know, when I was a Southwest student, we organized a walkout um, and, you know, seeing comments on, uh, you know, fa our Facebook live and our Facebook posts from adults you know, criticizing students who are getting involved and who are, who are wanting to make a change in their community was jarring and almost disgusting coming from adults in our community. And, you know, part of the step is the youth stepping up and saying, you know, we want change. And the other half of it is the adults meeting us halfway and saying, you know, what, I, I, I like that you're trying to make a difference in the community, whether or not you agree with it. You know, again, there's organizations that are leaning one way and others that are leaning another. But, you know, especially as a nonpartisan organization where, you know, we're just trying to benefit the community one way or another, you know, hopefully it's a different reception from the adults in our community and that they will embrace us rather than turn us away or kind of dismiss our work and dismiss our courage and our, our optimism because, you know, at, we are young and we are naive and we're, we're trying to make a difference. And, you know, uh, I, I just hope that we get a positive response from our community as well. Um, what, what would, or what are people calling your generation? Gen... Gen Z. Gen Z. So have you guys, I mean, so far you guys haven't gotten any, you know, negative comments or like, oh. Not to us. I think that uh, we've gotten a few condescending comments as far as, you know, like what makes you qualified or things like that. And, uh, you know, sure. I, that's a valid question. Whether we were, you know, 40 years old or 20 years old, what makes you qualified is always going to come up. And so, you know, being not afraid of those types of questions and not being afraid to kind of present who we are and we know what we're standing for and we know that the work that we're doing. However, you know, I have seen the way certain people have, uh, you know, dismissed other kind of young activist groups here in the Valley and the names that they've called them. I think, you know, there was one where they didn't even call them the right generational name and just continues to use the wrong one. And, you know, it, 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 it's things like that where, you know, I, I don't think that they're trying to be harmful in any way, but I think it's coming off as very dismissive of the work that young people are doing here in the Valley. And I think we all have the same goal, whether, you know, we don't see it. Adults here want to make our, our community better and the youth here wants to make our community better. And I think the best thing that we could do is kind of, you know, reach out and, you know, work together as much as possible and, uh, you know, be that kind of beacon of light here for everybody because, you know, we're all trying to do, we're all trying to make the Imperial Valley a better place. Yeah, exactly. Um, do you want to um, mention or shout out any any of the members that, you know, are are part of the Bayabota group? 
Yeah. So, you know, we have, uh, I, I probably won't say their last names because I'm unsure if they, they would want that. But, you know, we have, uh, you know, Yomar, who's helping a lot um, with all of our research. You know, we have Alyssa, who's also you know a lot of different people who we have again we have around 50 people who Mm. are all organizing in different ways so you know we have a research team who's primarily goal is to research all of the forums to research all of the candidates to research all the propositions and then we have a social media team you know i i love our our graphics they're 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 amazing they're doing great and they make it very eye-catching and very easy to read and nice to read and you know and then on top of that we have our outreach team i i don't think i mentioned this but we're also doing phone banking Mm -hmm. you know we're calling people in our community and saying you know have you registered to vote yet um if not like here's how to do it and a lot of it we're relying on our kind of uh relational aspects you know you'll be surprised by how many of your your aunts and uncles and your cousins and your friends aren't registered to vote so you know targeting those in our inner circle um as well as kind of calling out strangers and saying like hey have you registered to vote yet so you know we have a a full outreach team on top of this we're reaching out to businesses you know we you know we're in contact with a few pharmacies down here so we could put little like flyers in their pharmacy bag and we're working with other businesses to see if we could do the same with the takeout you know, we're putting up flyers. Um, we're and on top of all that. You know, we have a whole team dedicated to just reaching out and getting sponsors because at the end of the day, this costs money. Yeah. And, you know, all of these things that we're doing, you know, require research. And luckily, we've had already such great response from our community, such amazing sponsors who have donated our, our canvassing flyers, who have donated money, um, even some people who are donating their time, you know, you know, even though this is a youth driven organization, we have already have a few adults who have already said, sign me up for something. I'm like, I'm excited to do something. And, you know, we have all of those kind of like different teams and moving parts in this organization. But because everybody's so passionate about this, you know, everybody's doing their part. And it, it, it's almost beautiful to see because, you know, we don't have a parent organization. We don't have people telling us this is what you need to do. You know, it's us having weekly meetings. It's us having team meetings. It's us discussing what do we need to do and how can we make it better? Um, so again, you know, this is all the youth and this is all of us putting all of our different skills and assets together and, and trying to figure out how we can make this organization the best that we can has any local you know already established organization you know made reach out to you guys um we've had a few kind of established candidates um uh for example gil from bali who's on the elementary school board has like reached out and made a donation we've had a few businesses um also reach out um you know we we plan on reaching out to the rotary club as well as reach out to some of the more kind of like established people in our community um to kind of you know help us out and just you know something like this where you give us a platform you give us a chance to share our message and you give us a chance to share our voice that's all we ask for you know we we want to spread this as far as wide as we can because that's the only way to get people to vote if people hear our message yeah yeah um, well, is there anything else that you, you know, want to put out there that would, I didn't ask or we didn't talk about? Um, no, not really. I think I just kind of want to, you know, reiterate, register to vote. You know, if you don't know how, you could go to our Facebook page, via vote that. Or if you don't know how, you could go also on our Instagram and Twitter. And, you know, we have diagrams showing what the actual application is like. You know, what questions will they ask you? You know, because a lot of that's daunting. You know, you don't want to commit to something and then you're like, you don't know how long it's going to take. But no, it'll take five minutes. And these are the questions. Here's what you would need. Um, and and we'll, we're, we're trying to make everything easy. So register to vote. And if you haven't registered to vote, go check out our Facebook page or Instagram and our Twitters to figure out how and you know let us know if you did and let us know if anything that we posted was helpful that would be amazing to us and we've already had a few comments where it's like this like follow this page this page has helped me tremendously you know I, i'm not into politics but you know they 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 help me understand a concept and those messages alone just make all of us feel like we're conquering the world because that's why we do it this is why we're doing our mission um and so we hope to kind of reach as many people as we can yeah yeah um, yeah, I also made a, there's a video on my, on my Instagram. I think it's also my Facebook where I kind of like show people, like, you know, I, I record, recorded my screen and I show people how to check if they're registered and it's like, takes like a minute. Like it's super easy. So like, and then if you're not, you know, it'll show you, like you, you guys said, like it'll show you how to register and you know, it's like you said, it's like five minutes. So, so yeah, make sure like you register, you vote. It's easier this year. Like if you don't want to go out to a, to a, you know, vote, voting um 
place like you can do it by by mail so you know there's no excuse really no excuse for you not to vote um and yeah and and one of the biggest things like stay informed you know make sure you know what you're voting for uh who you're voting for um i'm gonna try and interview all those, as many candidates as i possibly can in these times um but yeah um henry thank you for you know taking this time uh, i really enjoy our conversation me. i really enjoy our conversation um and i appreciate what you guys are doing um like i said like i said i'm an an adult <laughs> an older adult and and i honestly uh, really support you guys um and i'm gonna try and, and share as much as your information as i can just so that you know people stay informed and and you know I, you know I'm, I'm glad that you have a lot of people because you know doing like like a podcast or doing something and like even doing stuff on, for social media you know takes time you know i i was looking at the your uh, uh your um instagram page and you know all this information you guys are doing yeah like you said it's really eye-catchy like the colors everything is like really fun and i know that uh, you know i'm in charge of the website for my school and i know how much time it takes to like do a graphic and you know i'm glad that you guys have a, a big group helping you out and and you know it's it's amazing how organized you guys are and you know and kudos to you guys i really really um you know appreciate what you're doing so thank you so much so once again thank you um thank you uh, i want to thank everybody for listening this is episode 101 it's so crazy um but yeah thank you guys for listening make sure you stay safe like i said earlier wash your hands wear your face mask keep your distance and you know that's uh help the rally you know get it back on their feet and um yeah see you guys in the next one peace